What up, everyone? So I've been saying for a long time that I'm going to get around to it. So I'm getting around to it. Uh, monthly review. All the boxes that have come in in the past couple of months, I think. I think it's been like three months since I've done, done one. And that's kind of the system we have here because a lot of these boxes are quarterly and I want to put them all in one review. So basically we get one of these every three months or so. Not much to talk about here. Not a lot going on with these boxes. As most of you know, this has all been slowly dying off for a very long time. So I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet and try to keep it to uh, a short amount of time as possible. So we'll go through each of these boxes. There's a, Some of them are monthly, so there are a few boxes here, a few things to talk about. But I'll try to keep it quick. That being said, if you're new to the channel, this video specifically is about monthly subscription boxes and to help you find the best one, the one that is the most catered for you. So I've gotten the ones that I think are the best, uh, the best ones out there that I've seen over the past years, and we're going to talk about them very quickly and give you a little synopsis of it, and then you can decide for yourself. Uh, so. That being said, the boxes are kind of in order. So I, I always used to put them in order from worst to best, but the lines are so blurred these days, so I kind of put them in order. But now it's more about just showing you what the boxes have to offer and what the companies have to offer and talk about them a little bit that way. So that being said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to run out of drink before this video is over. All right. So the first box we got is... The logo. Loot Crate. So, this box company has been around for a very long time. If you aren't up with the times recently, you know that this uh, the company actually went bankrupt and they got bought out by NECA, and NECA is a really good toy company and they're keeping it going. So, I had really high hopes for it that when NECA bought it out, because, you know, NECA is such a great company, they make such good products. And they showed some boxes they were getting funding for, like the Ninja Turtles one that everyone bought in on that's coming out this spring that I was very excited about. So I had very high hopes for it, and I thought they were going to kind of turn the company around. Because it's pretty bold for them to buy a company and keep it around. Like I explained in my last video, when companies go bankrupt, they go up for auction. But it's very rare that the people buying out that company keep the company going. They usually buy it for their distribution or buy it for their logo or buy it for the name or something like that. It's a rare occasion that they keep it going. So the fact that NECA did was a pretty big move and I thought they had some high hopes for them but really not so much. It kind of seems like a lot of the same stuff. So right before Loot Crate went out of business they jumped up their price point to that $30 price point where before it was $20 and it was so cheap it was easy to keep around and now they're up to $30 but the quality hasn't really changed much and the worst part about it is they're still like three months behind so I think I have let's see I have August September October and November I believe yeah so they're still three months behind. We haven't seen December, January, and definitely not February, even though we're halfway through the month now. So I thought that's something that would change. I thought they would get a little bit better about their monthly boxes or something like that because so many people have already paid for months past and they're owed boxes. So I thought they'd be able to catch up on that. And with the lower quality on these, I thought maybe they would, but you know, not so much. So starting out with August, August was actually not too bad. We got a pretty cool shirt from Masters of the Universe. We got a cool um, Megazord figure, and then a poster. No one gives a shit about that. And then a She-Ra pin, and then coasters, which are lame too. But you know, not not so bad. I like the figure. I like the Megazord figure. They did a decent job on that, and the shirt was pretty cool. But not much uh, better than that. So it was okay at best. And then moving into September, and this is the system they've kind of been going on, which is kind of lame, where they do a t-shirt and like a pin, the pins are always cool, and then one or two other items which are really lame and poor in quality. So in the September box, the shirt was very lame, honestly. It was the, the shirt we've seen so many times where it says Xavier School for the Gifted Youngsters, and it's made to look like a PE shirt, and it's it's just really lame looking. It's very poorly designed. There's nothing special about it. It just very looks very cheap and like something that would end up in the clearance section at any given clothing store. So it was really not that special. And it's also bright yellow, which who the hell wants to wear a bright yellow shirt? And then we got the pin, which was fine from Napoleon Dynamite. 
a little small plush figure, which is okay, but very cheap, and then a notebook, and then uh, one of those little flags, I always forget the name of them, uh, Pennant, uh, Pennant from Sunnydale. And it, it's those are things where it's like, those are very cheap things. It's like very dollar store items. This little plush, the little notebook. They're, it's just very cheap stuff. And then I think we also got um, a poster, a, very, a mini poster, which again, dollar store items, if even that. They're very cheap items. And again, they're not very special. And the t-shirt was very poorly designed. So bad, um, bad execution on that one. And then going into... October, we had one that was like kind of Halloween themed. We had a Deadpool shirt. It was like a crossover between like Deadpool and like Night of the Living Dead. So it was kind of a mix of it. And it kind of had a little bit of like Keith Haring art style to it, if you look at it. But again, it, it was okay. Not terrible, but not like great either. And then we got a little tote bag, which was okay. And then some little cards, some kind of trading cards, which are like half postcard, half trading card. I'm not really sure what to call them. And then a pin again. So the same system where we have a t-shirt and a pin, and depending on the what the design is of the t-shirt, it's okay. The pin's usually good. And then one or two other items which are very poor in quality, which again, dollar store items. Some cheap postcards and a little tote bag, a very small one, which is just like screen printed with just one monotone picture on there. Again, very poor execution. And then jumping ahead to November. So this one a little better. Uh, the t-shirt looks okay. It's got a Hydra t-shirt, but again, they pick weird colors all the time. Loot Crate, I get what they're going for. Loot Crate's trying to like mix it up with doing like different colors, so they're not just always doing black t-shirts all the time. But you know, I I'm not really a fan of that. I like that they're trying to do variety, but if you want variety, do variety in the design. The design should have color. The design can be different colors. That's what you can change up. The actual t-shirt is just like, it's so hard to wear them sometimes. And obviously, I'm wearing a bright blue one, but this is a rare occasion. There are certain color colors you can do and certain ones you can't do. So black, white, gray are the obvious ones that anyone can do and anyone can wear. I think blue is okay sometimes, only because most people wear jeans and that's a common color you see. But when you're getting into the greens and the reds and the yellows, it's just like, they're very weird colors and they're very strange, so it's kind of hard to pull them off. This one wasn't so bad because it's kind of like a muted green. It wasn't like bright neon green, but the previous one before that where it was like bright neon yellow, the Xavier one, it's like, that's too much. I don't want to wear that. And again with the Hydra one, like why green? Their logo, their symbol is black and red, and I would think they would at least have done red, if not black, but I'd like it if they keep it to the basic colors, the black, the gray, the white, and occasionally a color, but again, very muted, very dull versions of the colors. So, and this one also didn't have a, a lot of design quality too. It has the Hydra symbol, so it's, it's okay. And then we got a figure from Kid Robot, a Cartman figure. That's actually not too bad. So I, I, I like that they did that. They used to have partnerships with all kinds of companies. They used to have partnerships with Kid Robot, with Funko, with all the major vinyl figure designers. They used to have partnerships with them and used to get exclusives. That ended years ago. It was like two or three years ago that we got those companies again because they broke their partnerships because they were in debt because they owed these companies money and they never paid it off and that's why they eventually went ba bankrupt. So I'm assuming that NECA has a, an okay partnership with um, Kid Robot and that's why they got the figure, which is good to see. I like that they have partnerships. It's not just about getting something exclusive and random. It's good when they're partnered with good companies. Kid Robot's a good company. They do good stuff. And whether you like South Park or not, at least the quality of the figure was good. Then we got a G.I. Joe pin and it kind of, yeah, I was going to say it looks like a bottle opener. It's, oh no, sorry, it's not a pin. It's just a bottle opener. But we got the, um, uh, what is it, the, the G.I. Joe Cobra Commander symbol. So that's pretty cool. I, I like bottle openers. I use them a lot. So that's actually pretty reasonable. And then we got an art print in there. And I actually like the design on that too. They did a good job on the design of that. It was very cleverly done. It's like the half mix of like Justice League and um, this very famous painting, the name I don't know of, but it's a very famous traditional Japanese painting, Japanese style. So I really like that. Although the print is pretty much worthless though. These prints are not signed, they're not numbered, they're very small, so they are pretty much have no value whatsoever. They're only worth like the paper they're printed on, maybe a few dollars. So value-wise, it's nothing, but at least they picked a good design for it. So this box wasn't too bad. This is doing a little bit better. 
Um, because they got the shirt and instead of the pin, they got the, well, they still had a pin, but they had three items and the figure was good, the bottle opener was good, and the print was fine. So if they can follow that guideline, I think they'll do a little bit better. Where the previous ones, the, the alternate items beside the shirt and the pin were just really crappy. At least these ones are a little more branded and a little more practical. So November's was not too bad, but we'll see. They're kind of up and down. I hope NECA steps it up a little bit because we still need December, we still need January, and then February, so they're three months behind, and it's just getting a little old at this point. It's I thought they would fix these things for Loot Crate, and they're just not. So, I don't know, I'm just kind of losing hope in them. And we, I also got sent two random boxes. I got sent the Deadpool Merc Club, and I also got sent the Adult Swim box from Loot Crate. Why? I don't know. I didn't order them. I had the Deadpool Merc Club months ago. I canceled that like back in June or something like that. But some of the boxes keep showing up. But the weird thing about it is it's not one of their quarterly boxes. So I actually looked on the site to see what the info was on this box to talk about it. And that's not the box I got. They have a September box that had some decent stuff in it. It was actually pretty cool stuff. And I don't know what this is. This is a bunch of random stuff. I got like a, a koozie and a towel and a random t-shirt and an old plush. So I'm not sure what happened there. I didn't order the box. Maybe it was a box I was owed, I'm assuming, something like that. But they just stuffed a bunch of random crap in a box and sent it to me. And the same with the Adult Swim one. I couldn't find any info on it. It wasn't from one of their normal monthly boxes. And it was just kind of a bunch of random stuff. But I did discover the Deadpool Merc Club, they finally changed the price on it so it's a little bit more reasonable. I think it's 35 now, where before it was like 50 or 60. So I, the, the price is a little bit better, so it seems like a little bit more worth it. So if the NECA keeps building some momentum, I might go back and check out the Deadpool one again because they had such potential, Luke Cray just did a terrible job. And I also saw some quick little snippets of things that were in the DX box that I kind of liked too. So if this most recent November box for the regular Loot Crate was actually pretty okay, so it might be worth it for me to go check out like DX or Deadpool Mark Club again. But again, I'm not really sure the direction NECA is trying to go with this whole company. I really think they need to narrow it down and slim down what they have because they're still stretching themselves too thin. But I think there might be potential in the future. We just haven't quite seen it yet. But I am excited for the spring, um, that Ninja Turtles exclusive box that had the NECA splinter in there. I am very excited about that. And I have pretty high hopes for that. So that should be good. So whenever that shows up, that will be on the channel. So there's something to look forward to. All right. Moving on to the next company. So surprisingly enough, we actually have the BAM box, which has stopped using like a logo box. They stopped a long time ago. Why? I'm not really sure. But they have, they just use these brown and white shippers now. So the BAM box is so funny. It's, it'll disappear for like six months at a time and then it'll show up again. And I actually, this time around, I actually have three boxes. So it actually showed up for all those months. And I think they're a little bit behind too, but it's hard to tell with them because they've stopped going by the month and they've just started numbering the boxes, which is probably a smarter move because if they are behind on something, then people aren't expecting it a month late because it's labeled a September box and they got it in January or something like that. They just have numbered boxes, which I, was probably a smart move for them so they don't have to stick to this 30-day plan. They can just send it out when it's ready. Smart move. So the reason I found out, I talked to one of the associates that I hadn't gotten it before um, it was because I'm on the original like founders plan and I guess the I'm in the grandfathered price of it So I'm not paying as much as other people, but that doesn't give me a very high priority on the box So they've limited it to 2,500 boxes um, per box, which again, I think is a smart move I think it's good to limit that because that gives higher value to the things it gives a uh, gives them a chance to put better quality in there and it also gives them the opportunity to get better people to sign stuff because uh, they always put a signature in there every month but it's so hard to get someone when they're doing like a hundred thousand boxes or whatever that they sell that month it's so hard to get anyone that wants to sign that many of anything it's just an almost impossible feat to manage and i'm sure they were having to pay crazy amounts of money to get anyone to do it so the quality of people really went down significantly so it's 
probably better that they're capping at 2500 That's still a lot, though, so the, the quality of the signatures aren't great. But, you know, they're, they're still there, and at least they're still going. So they have switched to a system where they have the big BAM box now, where it's uh, much more expensive, but they have much higher quality stuff, which I wanted to check out, but the, unfortunately the price on that is $125. So that's a bit much. Or it goes from $26.99 to $124.99. So usually you assume it's like Loot Crate, where it's like the $20 or $30 box, and then the bigger one is like maybe double the price. But this one's like five times the price. And the fact that you don't know what's in it and you don't know who the signature is, that's a little too risky for me. Um, they did, there was another company that did this, um, I think it was the collector's case, where they did a guaranteed box, but you knew who was signing autographs. It was someone much more famous and much more valuable, but at least you knew who the person was and the rest of the items were a mystery. So the BAM box might want to consider doing that because 125 bucks is just way too much to risk on a complete gamble. That's way too much to gamble with on someone that you may not even know or may not even like. So they should at least give like a hint to who the person is signing it and the rest of the stuff in there because 125 bucks, it better be fucking fantastic if I'm paying that much money. So I want to check it out, but that's just so much money to risk and I'll, I'll consider it, but most likely not. I'll probably forget about it after I'm done talking about it. But anyway, so let's actually talk about these boxes. So again, they're not monthly. They just numbered them. And the weird thing is I've got sheets here. One's labeled number 10, and then I have two more, but they're both labeled box 12, which is weird. So I think they were supposed to have an 11, but I don't know if they just mislabeled it or what their system is that they're doing here. But it was two different boxes, but they're both labeled box 12. I'm assuming one of them is supposed to be 11, but, you know, I'm not really sure. And I'm assuming these are the same months that are in that, like, October, November, possibly December. So I'm assuming that too, but, again, not really sure. So the items in here were very underwhelming. So the same system they have with Loot Crate. We have the guaranteed signed item, we have the guaranteed art print, and then two variables. One's usually a figure, and one's a very lackluster item. So, starting off with number 10, the things that are always good in there are the pins. They always have pretty decent pins, but the autographs have been really lacking, and the prints have been really lacking too. So, the, the art prints are always well done. This first month 10, we got um, some pins from Adam's family, and then we had some art prints from Zombieland. But again, these more look just like photographs, and there's always a variant that's a little rarer. But at least they sign and number them. So at least there's that. So if the prints look like cool pictures, but at least there's some value because someone took the time to sign and number them. And then as far as um, the signatures, there's... You know, there are people that you recognize when they tell you who it is. You're like, oh yeah, I saw that movie. I recognize who it is. But it's just people that aren't that amazing. Like this one was the Angela Jones who was a taxi driver in Pulp Fiction. And it's like, okay, Pulp Fiction, we recognize that. And you probably remember that scene. But it's like, okay, I have the autograph of the taxi driver from, from Pulp Fiction. Like, okay. And then the last item is usually a movie prop, but it's very, very basic. So we got a Camp Crystal Lake scarf, or is that what it is? Scarf, something like that. And it's like, it's not something that was really shown too much in the movie, and it's just like a very basic replica. Moving on to the first box 12, again, pins are cool, Animaniacs. Art print is fine, it looks decent, has some value, but not much. Then we go to the signed one, and we got uh, someone who did the, a voice actor from um, the from Primal, which honestly I don't think I've seen. But again, very basic, it's very, very specific. You would have had to have seen that and remembered that one very specific character. It's not that they're unrecognizable, it's just very, very underwhelming people. And then we got a movie prop, the flag from Karate Kid from Cobra Kai. Again, very basic flag. And then the last one, pins. Pins are cool. Home Alone, loved it. And then we got an art print um, of some Bill Murray stuff. We got one from Scrooge, and, which I love that movie. And then another one from uh, another movie that I don't recognize. It could have been Scrooge as well. So again, art print's fine. They did a good job, signed and numbered. And then we got a signed pop figure, which is cool. They actually did a figure. I like that. 
but the voice of Dumbo, and it's like a movie from a very long time ago, a very obscure um, voice person, and then we got a movie prop, which was just a card from uh, Nakatomi Plaza, and it's like, again, very basic. The movie props have been very basic and very lackluster. The autographs have been from very underwhelming people. The art prints have been okay, and then the pins are good. So it seems like they're kind of going off the same system, and I get why they're going for this big BAM box, but again, the price point is just way too high. That's so high for that. So I'm not really sure where to go with this box. It seems like this basic box is very underwhelming and not really worth it but the other one just seems so crazy expensive it's hard to say what to do with that so i i don't know it's tough to tough to figure it out i really want to check out this expensive box but i think it's just going to be too much so other than that I, i'm not really sure what else to say i'm not sure the direction they're going to go it looks like they need some, to make some changes but i'm not sure this 125 dollars is the appropriate price point and the appropriate direction to go it kind of seems like they're just kind of lost in translation right here but you know we'll see hopefully um hopefully we see some more positive things from them other than that not sure what else to say there was the band box all right next one i'm always excited to see and that's the marvel collector cord so we got two these ones are always pretty interesting Got two different themes here. This is a bi-monthly box, so it comes every other month. And first one we got was just a generic holiday box, and the second one was the one that just came um, for January, and that was the Fantastic Four. So let's check these out. First one was the holiday box. This came in November, but it was for the holidays. And this one kind of follows the same standard as well. We usually always get a t-shirt, and then usually like two pop figures, and then a pin, and or a sticker sorry they, they haven't done pins lately a sticker and then like one other variable item which is usually very small which is fine it's not great it's not bad it's one of those things it's still worth the money it's still worth it to get it and that's why i keep it around and I, like i've said before marvel is my biggest fandom i'm a huge marvel fan so i always recognize the characters and i always like them so it's always worth it I think this box is going to stay around a long time because it's always just barely worth it, but it's not anything amazing anymore. It used to be. It used to be great. It used to be such amazing things, but now it's just always just okay, just barely good enough not to go through the trouble to cancel it. So the shirts are decent. Um, the Funko Pop shirts are always pretty nice in quality, so I like that. They actually print some pretty good t-shirts, so at least there's that. When you are getting t-shirts, you know they're decent in quality. And this one was just the Infinity Gauntlet, which was kind of Christmas themed, but it wasn't too Christmassy, so you can still wear it after the holiday, which I liked. And then we got the two pop figures, which was the Baby Groot, which is very, very themed for Christmas, and I like that one. And then we got a Thor one, which was like very mildly and subtly for Christmas. I think they could have picked something better for that, and they just had Thor where the Molnir, the end of it, looked like a present. I honestly had to really look at it hard because I'm like, how is this Christmas themed? And I had to really look, and I'm like, oh, okay, there it is, kind of. It's like a little too subtle, and I don't know, it just the pops that they've had in there are just kind of again very underwhelming I like the characters and I recognize them but there's just nothing special about them so it kinda just seems like they put the minimal effort in just to keep this box going and that's what it feels like and then we got a shot glass with the snowman Captain America and then a sticker so you know okay like reasonable and worth the money and the good thing is about it is at least everything in here is all exclusive and it's from Funko so at least there's that so even if you don't like the figures or if you happen to not recognize them you can usually sell them off pretty easily. They, they sell pretty well. You're not going to make a fortune off of it, so at the, but you might be able to at least get your money back. So at least there's that. So at least you're not losing a bunch of money if you don't like something. So that's why it's kept around because it always holds its value, but not by much. Uh, speaking of which, going into the Fantastic Four box, this one, same situation. So we got shirt, two pops, pin, and a sticker. And the shirt was fine. Got the classic pop figure style with the Fantastic Four. Sure, okay. And then we got the pin. Pin looks cool, like nothing amazing. Sticker, okay. And then we got two pop figures, but again, very underwhelming. We got um, Human Torch and uh, Mr. Fantastic, but nothing really special about them. So Human Torch is kind of in that old 
like 1930s style when he first came out. And then Mr. Fantastic is just very plain looking. He's got like, his hands are a little big, but that's about it. Like it, there's just so little design quality to it. Like the Human Torch, he's supposed to be engulfed in flames. There should be some really cool design to it. At least they have him off the ground and there's some flames below him. But Mr. Fantastic, he just doesn't look that much different from a regular person. He has bigger hands, so it's clear that its proportions are a little bit off because he's stretching. But again, just not that much design quality to He's doing a very basic stance, and I feel like they could have just done so much more with it. They just don't want to pour too much effort into this box. So again, very, very basic, very basic design quality, very basic stuff. The value on it is not something substantial. Uh, pretty much a little bit more than you're paying for it, but not much so enough to keep it around And if you really like Marvel, it's worth it, but there's not much more to say about it It's just very basic and it just seems like it's just kind of skating by these days So that's where it is and like I said before it will stay around for a while because I love Marvel And it's not too bad on the price and I still like it. There you go. All right Next, we got the Nick box, the winter edition. So this box is always jam-packed full of stuff. It's got a significant amount of stuff in here, which is great, but um, very, like I've always said, very niche market, very 90s Nickelodeon, which is a very small market, but still good stuff. And they put a lot in here. I really like the sweater because I remember that commercial, that little TV spot when I was a kid, so I like it. But Sweaters are always hard for me because they're always very awkwardly fitting. It's hard to get a sweater that really fits right. Because shirts, I like to wear fitted. But sweaters, I don't think they look as good when they're like super fitted. And also, I get too hot wearing them. I live in Southern California, so it's tough to have uh, sweater weather. And I like to wear them big and baggy, but it, the, I don't wear the same size t-shirt as I do sweater. And you only input that in the, your size one time. And whether it's shirt or sweater, they just do the same size. So that always throws it off for me. But I at least like the design of it. So if you happen to fit it, then that's cool. And we got a scarf from Double Dare, which who gives a shit? Like, again, I'm in Southern California. We don't wear scarves here. I don't think I've ever seen someone wear a scarf in my entire life. So maybe they do elsewhere. Sure. Some bookends, which were pretty basic. There's pretty simplistic design to them. And I saw online that a lot of people's items were arriving damaged. So they, it seemed like there was a lot of damage to the bookend. There was a lot of damage to the ceramic mug. It seems like a lot of things have been showing up damaged. So I hope that's not a sign of things to come with a poor design quality. But the mug was at least ceramic and had a decent look to it. And we got an auto figure, which, okay, pretty well designed. The pins were pretty cool. And then we got some magnets from Ren and Stimpy. So all cool stuff. Like, it was, it's well done, well designed. Um, it seemed like the quality slipped a little bit because so many things arrived damaged. But it did come with a lot of stuff. So overall cool, and I'm pretty happy with it. And the things I didn't like, I don't think it would be too much of a hassle to sell. The scarf might be a hard sell on the bookends, but, you know, it, it's still cool stuff, and it's still happy to see it. It is pretty expensive, and this is another one where it's just, like, kind of just barely skating by. It's just barely worth it, because I do like seeing the stuff, and I do enjoy it, and they are pretty creative. They put a lot of shit in there, and they are pretty creative with the designs and the characters, because they have a limited uh, number of characters they can work with, because it's all that 90s Nickelodeon. But they've been keeping it interesting. They've been around for, what, two years now or something like that? Maybe a little longer. And they've really kept it interesting, and I'm always surprised to see what's in there. So, you know, uh, not too much to complain about. Again, like most of these boxes, nothing amazing. If you're really into that, it's worth it, but not by a lot. You're not going to be blown away. It's just kind of skating by like most of these boxes are. So there's that. Next, Geek Fuel. EXP. I'm surprised this box is still going. I always forget that this box is coming. Uh, pretty high price point, and this one seems like it's been dwindling down a lot too. The first like box or two they did was just like packed full of stuff and had a lot of exclusive stuff and a lot of really cool stuff, figures, all kinds of that. And now it's kind of dwindled down a little bit to where we're only getting a handful of items. So this one, it, like in all boxes, you're always getting a shirt because it's so cheap for them to make. And then we got a book, which was a softcover version of a hardcover book. So they've 
so many companies have done that where they say you're getting an exclusive book, but it's not. It's just an exclusive version. I've seen this book a million times, The Art of Sideshow. It's been around so for years and years and years and years, and I've seen so many iterations of it. This book already exists. It's just the soft cover version. So it's an exclusive book, but it's just an exclusive version. This book exists elsewhere. It's just kind of like a cheap ploy to say it's exclusive. But, you know, it's not bad. It's still cool stuff, but... I, I was never that interested in the book because it's like the Sideshow does statues. If you really like Sideshow, you buy the statues and just have them. It's weird to have pictures of statues and of action figures. Like They put them in cool scenes and stuff like that, but wh why would I want pictures of action figures? If I wanted action figures, I would buy those action figures and have them. It's weird to have a book of pictures of action figures it's just like seems like such an odd choice sideshow does a good job so the pictures look cool but when am i ever gonna want to look at that it just seems like an odd choice to me and then they always said there's steam game codes which who gives a shit about like there's so many games out there i don't think i've ever once used one of the codes they've given a keychain which is cool of different like classic nintendos Nintendo um, controllers and systems. And then we got a little pin that they do these exclusive pin pals, but they only give you one, and there's usually a set, so it's very hard to collect the set. And then we got a blanket, which looks like um, the, one of the classic Nintendo uh, power controllers. So, fine. Uh, but again, it seems like they're dwindling down a lot. So we got the shirt, the book, keychain pin, and a blanket. Not terrible, but I feel like they could put a lot more. There could be a lot more design quality in it. And it's stuff that I'm just not super interested in. hasn't been that great. The past two boxes they did weren't that great either. And I think I'm going to give them one more chance and see if they can do anything impressive with the next box. So this was number seven. We'll see what number eight has to hold. But if it's not anything amazing, I think I'm going to end up canceling this one because it is pretty expensive. I, Off the top of my head, I don't remember the price point. But it was somewhere between like that $60, $70 range. And it's it's very pricey. And for what you're getting, it's just not really worth it. The t-shirt design was cool on that. I like the keychain. But that's about it. And is it really worth like 60 or 70 bucks for a t-shirt and keychain? Like, no, absolutely not. And even if I loved everything in the box, it still wouldn't really seem too worth it in my opinion. So that's that. Next, we got the World's Finest Collection. And we got the Superman box. This is the second Superman box, by the way. So they did one before. It was one of their first ones. I think it was their second one. The first one was Batman. I think the second one was Superman. I think. But they redo it. They redid it because they only have so many characters in Justice League and they're cycling back through. We got our second Batman one. Now this is our second Superman one. But you know, it's it's much better. So the figure they have in here, they finally deterred from the classic just like standing there stationary figure. They always look so boring before. So they're finally breaking that mold. And this one's semi-decent because... It's the Clark Kent Superman. It's the bus, so it's a little bit better. It's a little bit bigger, so there's a little bit more detail. But they've never been super good at making these figures, and they aren't worth a lot. They don't sell for a lot. They're just okay. They're pretty cheaply done, and it's really hard um, to get any good value out of something like that. The sweater I thought was really cool. They did a good job on it. I like the color scheme and the picture on the back was really cool. But again, I tried it on. I really wanted to like it, but I tried it on. It just doesn't fit right because I don't know if ever anyone else is the same, but my t-shirt size and my sweater size are different. Those are two different things. Those are two different kinds of fitting clothing. And I, I'm not sure if it's the same for everyone else, but they only ask for your shirt size and they assume you wear the same size sweater, but I don't. I don't wear the same size, so this one just didn't really fit appropriately. I feel like they should ask for what you wear in t-shirt and what you wear in sweater or like ask you in advance, like say, hey, we're, we're switching up with the sweater. Do you wear the same size? Yes or no? I feel like they should at least give you the option because this one doesn't fit. And I really wanted it to because it looked cool. And then we got just a little art print in there, nothing, and then the pin, pins are always decent, we got a little bookend or a bookshelf, which looks okay, it's a little wall mount one, it's decent, and then we got this glass, this like stein pint glass mug, and I thought it was going to be really cool, because it's supposed to be his um, fortress of solitude, where it's like the ice or the crystals or everything like that, and they did a glass mug, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be so cool. They're going to, like, design it and sculpt it with a logo in there. And I opened it up, and I was so disappointed because it's the most average-looking, and I'm not sure what the appropriate word is. I want to say Stein. I'm not sure if you can call that if it's glass. 
mug, whatever you want to call it. It's the most average looking mug you've ever seen in your life. It's got like some etch design, but the Superman logo is just like screen printed on there. It's like, I feel like that was such a missed opportunity. There's so many cool things they could have done. They could have made the Superman logo, but actually made it sculpted so it looks like ice or crystals or something like that, or etched it into the glass or something like that. But it's just this very plain little pattern to the glass mug, and then the Superman logo just slapped on there. And it's just, that is such a missed opportunity. It's so boring looking, and I'm not even going to keep this around. And I honestly don't think I'm going to be able to sell it because it's just very, very average looking. It seems like one of those very cheap mugs you can buy online because people are just making them and printing them on them themselves. And then we also got this little, it was supposed to be this like 3D model thing of the city in the little glass container. But again, very poorly executed because there was only like three layers to it. And again, poorly executed, just not done well at all. So to sum up, the sweater was cool, figure was okay. Everything else was just okay. And this one's pretty pricey too. So they're, again, just barely keeping it along. But they've already done their second Batman and their second Superman. And the rest of the characters just aren't that exciting. So they might do, I'm assuming they're going to do the same cycle. They do one after this. That's the full Justice League. And then maybe the Legion of Doom. And then maybe a Joker box because those are the popular characters. And probably a Wonder Woman one because she's popular enough. But characters like Aquaman and Cyborg, I don't think they're popular enough to merit their own box but you know we'll see so this one's been like chugging along for a very long time but it seems like this one's coming to its inevitable inevitable end as well much like most of these boxes all right then last but not least one that's always topping the charts is lutaku so this one always does a very good job we were gone for three months, we have three boxes, just how it's supposed to be. They're all the way in Hong Kong, but they're making their boxes on time. I don't know why Loot Crate can't do the same. So they do really cool designs on things. Um, they've been putting in t-shirts more often lately, which I'm not the biggest fan of because it's hard when you get shirts from like Hong Kong and stuff like that to get them to fit right. But the first one in the, um, let's see what we got here. I think it was August. Let's do, let me look. No, this is November. We have November, December and January, I believe, right? No, sorry. We have October, November, and December. Okay, I was out of order there. So let's start off with the October box. And this is when we got a cool figure of Bardock. We get a lot of Dragon Ball stuff, which I'm fine with, and some other anime, which I didn't recognize as much. The t-shirt had Sephiroth on it, which I thought was really cool. And the little figures from Final Fantasy were cool. The pins are always immaculate. They do these really big pins that are very well designed. They're just like amazing pieces of art on their own. And they always get really high quality stuff from either Band Presto or Crane King or some company where it's like branded stuff and it's high quality. And it's not exclusive, but it's very high quality products. These uh, PVC or vinyl statues are always amazing in quality. They have really good choices, and the quality on those is always really great. Like, unlike these other companies, they try to make their own products or they have partnerships with these very cheap manufacturers. These are well-known manufacturers that sell a lot of products. So the Bardock figure looked really cool, and the Sephiroth shirt was, was, was pretty cool. It was just like a black and white design. And then we have the little figure, and the pin is always awesome. And then on to November, the t-shirt design in November was actually really cool. I like this like uh, Vegeta where he's about to transform into Ozaru. And I think that's his name, right? And then we got a nice pin and then a figure from, I think it was My Hero Academia. And then a little bag. So this that's all good stuff. Uh, I like that. I always like that it comes with a cool figure. The only problem I always run into is a lot of times I don't recognize uh, some of the anime. Like most of them I do, but every once in a while they'll do some obscure anime, which I'm sure makes some people happy. People that are like really big anime fans want to see the lesser known anime. But people that um, only know the big names like me, I want to always want to see like more Dragon Ball and stuff like that. So it's always a toss-up there. But the good news is if you don't recognize the anime, it's very easy to sell the stuff because it's such popular brands and it's such popular characters. It's very easy to give it as a gift or to sell it to someone else. So no problem there. And then the last one we got was for December. These ones, I didn't recognize any of the anime in there. We got Demon Slayer and Black Clover. So I'm sure they're great. I, I'm sure it's great anime. I, I would love to check it out if I had the time. I'm just not familiar with them at all. But again, figures are very high in quality. Pin is very high in quality. The t-shirt has a nice design. Very easy to go flip that stuff and give it to someone else. So 
that's all I got to say about that. We're actually making pretty good time. Uh, we got through all these boxes, and like I said, there's not much to say about them. These companies are, for the most part, with the exception of Lutaku, are all kind of dying off. They're all kind of losing steam. They're losing funding. They're losing motivation. They're losing their design quality. So much of them was just tipping over because this was, I think, just a big fad, this whole monthly subscription box, and it's just slowly dying off. I'm kind of surprised these companies have stayed along for this long. But, you know, every once in a while... We get some cool shit with these boxes, and it's still worth checking out. Companies like Marvel Collector Core, I think, is always going to be around. I think Lutaku is always going to be around. Loot Crate, I think, is is going to stick around for a long time because I, they do have a lot of possibilities. But a lot of these other companies, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen to them. I'm not sure where they're going to go from there. And for the most part, I'm just kind of steering away slowly but surely from these monthly, monthly subscription boxes. And I'd like to the channel to just be more about collectibles in general. And that's my plan, but I so rarely have time to do individual reviews and things like that. So I, it's always something I want to do and steer away from these, but I never usually have time for. But for now, there's another monthly review, and you'll still see one in another three months. In the meantime, I hope to do more weekly roundups and maybe some uh, movie reviews and stuff like that. Until then, I wish I had more time to do more stuff, and I will really try to. I have ideas for the channel and things I want to do. But, you know, my channel's slowly dying off, too. The, the, it's going down with every passing month. It's understandably so. I, I'm not upset about that because I just haven't been able to put the time into it. But it's something I always like doing, and it's something I'm always going to want to do. And I have a lot of stuff here, too, that I'm going to start doing giveaways again, so... Uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to be giving away from some stuff. And then thank you for anyone who's still watching and supporting. I appreciate you all. Uh, let's hear what you have to say in the comments. Thoughts, opinions, anything you want to talk about, let's talk about it there. Until then, see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Peace.